everyone, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. If you are new here, my name is Megan Forbes and this is my classroom. I teach sixth grade history and eighth grade English. This is my seventh year of teaching and I am by no means an expert, but I do really love talking with new teachers and pre-service teachers and just kind of like hashing out some of those questions and fears and things that you're anxious about, things that you're excited for, and just talking through that kind of stuff and just connecting as teachers. So there is a website called Teachers Connect where teachers can connect. So Teachers Connect actually hooked me up with a pre-service teacher who has some questions about going into her own classroom for the first time. So thank you so much to Terika for taking the time to record these questions and just think about the things that she is currently wondering. So I have those questions right here on my screen. So I'm gonna let her ask the questions and then I will do my best to answer them. And thank you to Teachers Connect for connecting us. There are lots of other new teachers and like pre-service teachers over on that website. So if you're interested in finding more people who are in the same situation as you, maybe if you are also toward the beginning of your teaching career, that's a really good place to just like make new teacher friends. Okay, I, I'm like nervous for some reason. Okay, let's let's see what we got here. Hey Megan, um, I just have a couple of questions for you. Oh, she's so cute. I love her glasses and the earrings and the jean jacket and the haircut. Okay, okay. I'm like distracted, I gotta pay attention. First, when did you know that you wanted to be a teacher? What was your aha moment? Um, why did you become a teacher? Okay, so I didn't always know that I wanted to be a teacher. I changed my major a bunch of times in college and I was a music major at the beginning. I thought I was gonna do something in the music industry, I guess. I didn't really have it planned out, but one cool thing that I started doing pretty early on in my college career was teaching um, piano and voice lessons to students. And I thought that was gonna help me somehow in my music career, but what it really ended up doing was showing me how much I just liked being an educator. I really loved getting to know the kids and getting to know their families. Actually, this is gonna like date me, but I had these two twins who are some of my favorite students ever. They're boy and girl twins. And I started with them when they were five and I was like, 19 or 20 and I just got invited to their 18th birthday party and they're about to graduate from high school so I feel very very old but I also just like love that I've gotten to see you know a whole like generation of students so it was more that side of it just like building relationships with kids and families that made me realize I wanted to be a teacher and then I'm not nearly talented enough to be like a band director and a music teacher. I don't play every single instrument, so I had to find another subject area. <laughs> what aspects of teaching were a total surprise for you and how did you deal with those same aspects? You know what was surprising for me, and this might not be the same everywhere, but just how hard it was to get a job. I got my teaching credential during the recession and there were a bunch of layoffs and there was just nobody hiring and that was really, really difficult, like having to fight so, so hard just to get teaching jobs. Me and my husband are both teachers, so we were like both looking for teaching jobs and that was very discouraging at first and budgets and stuff tend to be kind of cyclical you know so our employment is based on like tax money and state budgets and district budgets and enrollment and where people live and all that kind of stuff so i think one thing that surprised me was just that um at least at the beginning when you're sort of like the new person in the district employment can be very temporary i guess and unstable and so um i mean we just had to like deal with whatever came our way if we got laid off then we just had to look for new jobs and we just always kind of lived in a state of like all right we might not get to stay here for very long now i think we're a little bit more settled now that we've been in districts for a little bit longer but that is something that could potentially happen what was your vision for yourself on what type of teacher you want it to be and how did that vision coincide with the reality of what teaching is? Oh, that's a really good question. When I was doing my student teaching, I taught with two different teachers. They were both high school history teachers, so I taught um, 10th grade world history and 11th grade US history. And both of my master teachers were just so smart. They knew their content so well. They knew their students so well. Um, they just always had everything 
planned out so perfectly or at least it seemed that way to me they really had a vision for like how the whole school year would go they knew like which primary source documents they were going to be using which assessments they were going to be using what projects they would be doing and so i think because they planned so well and you know they'd been doing it for a little while um they were just so like confident and secure in their teaching and i just remember thinking like okay i, I want to be like that i want to know this stuff so well that i can just like walk around the room, change things up at any time, respond to and discuss current events along with the curriculum that they had already planned on doing. And I just thought it was really cool just to like have that confidence of being a seasoned teacher and just knowing what you were doing. I loved that and I loved that they were just like, they were very professional but also warm with their students, but really like no nonsense. I think that did really inspire like the vision of the teacher I wanted to be. What goals do you have um, for yourself for this year? Well, I guess we could say a goal for like next year. And one of my goals, I think it was a goal this year too, is just to get things graded and input into the grade book on a weekly basis and to never be more than like a week behind on that kind of stuff. It's so hard for me to stay caught up with 200 students. If you could give any advice to pre-service teachers like me, um, what would it be? I know that pre-service teachers are really, really busy because you're taking classes and you're doing your student teaching and you're usually just kind of thrown into a situation that you haven't been in before. So I don't want to give you like a list of things to do because you already have so much to do. I don't want to stress you out anymore, but it is really important while you're going through all of those classes and getting those observation hours and student teaching hours that you just really put your best foot forward. Be as prepared as you possibly can. Present yourself as professionally as you can. Try to meet some of the other teachers at that school or maybe the principal at that school because your ultimate goal is to get a job, right? And who knows when, you know, a position that you're interested will be open, but maybe you could at least like substitute at that school or get a recommendation from somebody at that school. So you do want to treat that time as kind of like a little bit of a job interview and you want to be able to come out of it with a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge and hopefully it won't feel like too much of a blur. Do you plan on leaving the classroom? And if you do plan on leaving the classroom, what avenue would you like to go in? I do not plan on leaving the classroom. In most professions, like, you know, the position that you start in is not where you stay forever. You know, you do make some kind of like professional changes. So I think it's pretty normal for teachers to want to go into admin or want to go into like being a coach of teachers or a teacher trainer or something like that. So those are all really good options for teachers. Personally, for me though, I just, I really like being where I am. I like being in the classroom. I like being with my students. And I do love kind of, you know, teaching professional development just in this way, just like having my YouTube channel and having Instagram. I love presenting at conferences and connecting with teachers that way. But at the end of the day, like I still want to be in the classroom. So I personally don't have any plans to make any career changes. I just add things on to my current job. How do you determine goals for the kids on a holistic level? Not just academically, but social emotionally. And does this change year by year? This is a really great question too. So let's take the lesson that I taught today as an example, just like a microcosm of goals that I have for my students. So on the surface level, we were studying poetry, but the poem that we were studying was actually lyrics from Immigrants We Get the Job Done, which is on the Hamilton mixtape. So I also wanted to bring in like some pop culture and my students don't really listen to that kind of music actually so i'm like just also exposing them to like some other elements of pop culture so that was kind of just another mini goal and then i had set up stations around the room where they were using six different like literary lenses to analyze those poems and while you know i wanted them to succeed at each station like my real underlying goal and, and i told them this as well, was just to like expose them to like different ways that you can kind of come into a poem. Because most of us, when we read a poem, we're just like, okay, I don't even know where to begin in trying to understand this. So we had like a historical lens, a biographical lens, psychological, formalist, all that kind of stuff. So we didn't have a ton of time today, but it was just kind of like an introduction of like, these are ways that you can read poetry. Now on another level, I was having them do this 
with groups and they had to rotate around the room. So I also wanted to give them practice in working with a group. I also wanted them to follow instructions and to stay on task and make sure everybody is included in their group. So those are all like little goals that I have for them as well that I tried to build into every lesson. And then on an even deeper level, the poem slash song, and we actually watched the music video as well, is from the perspective of immigrants who have come to this country and taken great risks to be here and work really, really hard doing jobs that nobody else wants to do, and yet they're called illegal or disrespected, and this land of opportunity for them maybe doesn't turn out the way that they thought it would. So I also wanted them to be able to empathize with the lyrics in that way and understand what the writers were saying. So just in one lesson that was like, you know, 40 minutes, I had a lot of goals for my students. And these types of goals are, are pretty consistent throughout the year, but I do always change things up every year so next year i might find another way of doing it what advice would you give to new teachers on engaging parents and incorporating them into the classroom so at the middle school level we don't involve parents all that much we don't have like room moms or anything like that anymore but then sometimes you do need parents and you do need help with certain events and you've been ignoring them for the whole year and then it's kind of hard to ask for help so if you do teach like middle school or high school, just keep that in mind that you don't wanna like completely ostracize all the parents because there could be situations where you really need them. We have a few very, very helpful parents this year. One parent always comes with her camera and takes like nice pictures of all the different events that we do. So if you have anybody that is interested in photography, that's always nice. Um, we did a couple of different like cultural celebrations in my sixth grade history classes this year and I did ask for parent volunteers and I think they were just so surprised to be asked because most of the time in middle school we just don't reach out to them at all that um, we had several parent volunteers and they came and did a great job and it was awesome to work with them so yeah as middle and high school teachers just Keep that in mind that, that you may need them, so don't push them away too much. <laughs> How can new teachers best advance their burgeoning careers in education? A few things that come to mind that I didn't have seven or eight years ago when I was becoming a teacher are all these really great online conferences. When I used to think of conferences in my mind, I thought it was something like maybe once or twice in a lifetime that you get to do, like once or twice in a career. So I just thought of it as something that you'd have to like spend a lot of money on and travel to, stay in a hotel and all of that kind of stuff. So I didn't see conferences as like a, a common thing. And there are still quite a few that would like fall into those categories, but I've noticed so many more online conferences lately that are really affordable or free. And you don't have to travel, you don't have to pay for food, you can just watch them on your couch. And it's also great that we have so many resources now, just like YouTube videos and teacher blogs and educational podcasts. So whatever your area of interest is, or maybe like an area where you feel like you just still need to learn more about that thing, you can find usually free advice and expertise on whatever that topic is in almost any format. So we're very lucky in 2000, what is it, 19? <laughs> what teacher hacks? Do you have to share on anything from uh, flexible seating, setting up a classroom, um, to even finding ways to um, incorporate new ideas into your lesson plans? Teacher hacks, all right. Um, okay, so flexible seating. I don't really do flexible seating just because of how many kids have to fit into such a small space in my classroom. So I do have just like the traditional tables and chairs, but we move around our tables and chairs all the time to fit whatever activity we're doing. So um, at the beginning of the year, I had like three long groups and those were useful for certain things. And then every week on Thursdays, we push the tables to the side, bring the chairs in and we do community circles. When we were doing a novel study, we had the, the tables just set up in like one big circle so that we could all see each other while we were doing our novel study and discussion. Next week we were 
thinking of doing like a little kind of coffee shop vibe thing. So maybe I can adjust the tables so that they're, I don't know, just more coffee shoppy, kind of make it feel like a little Starbucks or something. So even if you don't have like, you know, the, the bouncy seats and like the little rocking chairs or whatever, like that doesn't mean you can't change the layout of the classroom to match whatever you're trying to do in your room. I'm thinking about ways to incorporate new ideas into your lesson plans. And I think my tip for that is that like, if you wanna do something that's like kind of different, kind of weird, you've just really gotta own it and you have to be excited about it. Like it's really hard for me to do sort of like out of the box stuff if I'm tired and cranky and I haven't had coffee because it's just hard for me to like sell it. Like that's that's part of being a teacher is you kind of have to just like sell your ideas or at least in middle school, I don't know, maybe like first graders and kindergartners are just like willing to do any crazy thing that you try. But like some of my eighth grade classes today were so resistant and reluctant to doing the station and kind of like having things in a different format. And um, you're tempted to be very annoyed <laughs> because you put in all of this extra work and you know, you kind of like set things up in a different way and you put in all this extra time. And then when they act like it's stupid, you're like, hey, we could just sit here and like read a book and you could answer some questions, okay? And you're gonna be really tempted to just be like, forget it then, never mind. Like, you guys don't deserve this. I'm not gonna spend any more time planning cool lessons for you when you don't even appreciate it. And with everything within you, just try to fight that urge. Although sometimes that just like might be the thing. But maybe don't say that like in the moment. Just like do your best, finish the lesson, and then maybe like the next day, you have like a really chill lesson, just like very traditional with like no bells and whistles, and you're like, it seems like yesterday you didn't want to participate in anything that was outside of the box, so today we're gonna go back to what I am assuming you prefer, and then maybe have a time to like discuss, you know, the, the different formats that they like or whatever. But you're, you're going to have days like that where you're like, seriously? Guys are so ungrateful. <laughs> but just get some coffee, roll with it, and just assume, I just, this is what I assume. I assume that later on, someday they're gonna think back to that lesson and be like, oh yeah, that was kinda cool. Even if in the moment with their friends, they're acting like dumbos and being really rude. <laughs> uh, especially if you have like middle or high school, like on occasion, at least, that will happen. And then what ways can teachers on a limited budget get professional development outside of the what the school offers thanks okay that is a great question and so like i was saying there are a lot of these online conferences especially over the summer and then like um podcasts blogs youtube videos i've also gone to conferences before where i just like applied for a scholarship so facing history does some of these sometimes um teaching tolerance they tend to be rather pricey maybe around like the $400 mark but sometimes they have like one or two scholarship spots available and so always like check and see if you could just apply for a scholarship spot if there is some kind of a conference you're really interested in going to a lot of times on Twitter or just like on email lists that I sign up for I'll find out about like online webinars and those are almost always free and again some of my favorite ones are through like teaching tolerance Facing History in Ourselves, um, Vocabulary, Newzella. A lot of those education companies do free online webinars. There are even like Twitter chats where you can learn a ton. Different people or different like educational groups will hold Twitter chats and they'll post a question and then a bunch of different people respond to that question like using a certain hashtag. So you can participate or just kind of like follow along and just you know, save any good ideas that you see. And then I just want to underscore again, like podcasts. I've listened to some really good teacher podcasts. Cult of Pedagogy is one of my favorites. Teaching Hard History is another one of my favorites. A lot of people that you might already follow on Instagram, um, might have a podcast where they just talk about different things from their perspective. So we are very lucky that we live in a time when we have access to more free professional development than we can ever even consume. And I've noticed that on Teachers Connect, people like to post links to like um, different educational articles that they thought were interesting or blog posts or like some research. And so actually I feel like I should do that right now. I should go on the website and just post a couple of good resources for the summer for maybe like new teachers that are wondering the same thing. We have a little book club over there as well that just kind of like walks you through different teaching books. And if you're on a budget, 
Sometimes you can get like, you know, a Kindle version of those or maybe borrow it from the library instead of buying it off of Amazon. So luckily for us, there are just lots and lots of ways to get free professional development. So thank you so much, Tarika, for your questions. And I just wish you the best in your teaching career. I can see your passion. I can tell that you are trying to be the best teacher you can possibly be right out the gate. So it's so exciting to see that happen. Thank you again to Teachers Connect for hooking us up. And thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.